Okay, um, on to a new category of neurotransmitters. Um, the amino acids are different than the biogenic amines because the biogenic amines are slightly modified amino acids that couldn't, for instance, be part of a protein any longer. But the uh, straight amino acids are just like this amino acid could have just as easily been part of a peptide, um, but it's being used as a neurotransmitter. So um, there are two that are generally excitatory and two that are generally inhibitory. For each, one is more common in the CNS and one is more, or one is more common in the brain and one is more common in the spinal cord. So um, the uh, amino acid neurotransmitters, these are the most abundant CNS neurotransmitter category, meaning you find them used all over the brain. Um, now, the excitatory amino acid neurotransmitters glutamate and aspartate, similar to one another. Um, terminology, not very consistent terminology with these. So I don't think I can find anything that will really help you know. So they usually just call them glutamate synapse or an aspartate synapse. So the function for glutamate is, um, it's really important in neuroplasticity in a portion of the brain called the hippocampus, which is important for memory. It's also important for neuroplasticity in the cerebral cortex. What do I mean by neuroplasticity? Forming new synapses is neuroplasticity. So this is really important for that kind of neuroplasticity. Um, a clinical connections with glutamate. Now we don't know everything about ADHD and it seems to involve like four or five different neurotransmitters, but we do know that glutamate is implicated at least in part in ADHD because you can help treat it with some things that manipulate glutamate levels. Um, PCP is a drug that not very many people use anymore. Um, it acts at glutamate receptors. It's that drug that you might've heard about like or seen in a movie from like, I don't know, 70s or 80s when like 150 pound dude is just like so 10 foot tall bulletproof that it takes a six cops to bring him down. Um, so, and then ketamine, um, which um, is a drug that is used as an anesthetic in both non-human mammals and also humans, it inhibits glutamate. It's a glutamate antagonist. So, and then aspartate does something similar but primarily in the spinal cord and the brainstem, not the hippocampus and the cerebral cortex. Um, the glutamate and aspartate um, receptors are usually called NMDA receptors, but there are other names and the naming convention isn't very predictable. There are almost always those NMDA receptors are excitatory. Okay, inhibitory amino acid neurotransmitters, um, GABA, um, this guy right here. Um, I usually don't make you spell this one out. GABA is what everybody calls it. Gamma amino butyric acid. This is your chill out neurotransmitter. Um, it's like nature's Valium. It's an anxiolytic. It makes you less anxious. Um, receptors are typically referred to as GABA ergic receptors. Um, when you release GABA, you feel it. You release GABA. Um, when you're being calmed down, GABA is released immediately after an orgasm. So that calm feeling that you feel that time. Um, and then, of course, we tend to seek out GABA because it's kind of stressful in life right now. So how do we do that? Um, there's a whole category of drugs called benzodiazepines. Um, these are really important clinically. Um, Xanax, Valium, Clonazepam, a whole bunch of them, Clonopin. Um, what those do is they enhance the action of GABA at the synapses, so they make GABA work better. Um, they are very, very commonly used as anti-anxiety medications. They are also sometimes sort of improperly used as sleep medications, and they are potentially deadly, both being on them and going off of them, especially when combined with other things like alcohol or opioids. So they are not for the faint of heart and they are not to be undertaken lightly, but they're very, very commonly prescribed in the United States. And then alcohol also enhances GABA's action, but slightly differently than benzodiazepines. Um, alcohol also has a lot of other neurotransmitter functions um, with a lot of other neurotransmitters, but the chill out that you get when you have a, a sip of wine, that calm, that um, muscle relaxant that you feel, um, that's GABA's action that you're feeling. So there's a 
write up about the role of GABAergic agents in your textbook. It's worth reading. And then we'll talk about these in class as well. Um, and then glycine is a CNS um, chill out neurotransmitter as well, but it's mostly active in the spinal cord and the brainstem, um, not the same places as GABA. And um, strychnine, which is a poison, is actually a glycine antagonist. And when you block all the glycine, then everything kind of seizes up. Okay, we'll stop there.